All right, hello and welcome back. My name is Cameron Kirk and this is another video in my series on DE10 Nano projects. And this one is a bit of a unique one and I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, we are going to be writing a simple Linux driver. Now, <clears throat> um, currently at the time of recording this, on the DE10 Nano repository that I have been doing walkthroughs for in this series. Um, there is no uh, Linux driver step on their, um, on their repository. Uh, but what I have done is I have a open pull request and I'm hoping that it gets accepted. Um, <clears throat> but this includes the uh, Linux driver guide that I created. Now, um, what I've done to make this guide is I've sort of <clears throat> taken the setup that we have from this repository that we've been doing all these walkthroughs on, and I have uh, looked at the references and I came across um, this bitlog um, resource, which explains how to write a <clears throat> excuse me uh, explains how to write a loadable kernel module, um, and then. I also noticed that this bitlog guide um, got its content from basically this rocket boards guide and even it's pretty open about the, this being its reference. Um, and so I went back to this rocket boards guide and I studied everything very carefully making sure I understand and I got the source code and the source code did not compile right out of the box but basically I went through the process of getting it to work with our setup on our DE10 Nano. So with all that said, um, if the changes get accepted, that repository will have a new, let me get out of the way here. It will have a new entry here for writing a simple Linux driver and this is the guide that I put together. And um, yeah, uh, so let's, uh, let's do a walkthrough on these steps. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, okay, so, <coughs> oh, the other trick to getting it to work um, was also this Rocket Boards article, which turned out to already be a reference um, in one of the uh, previous. It turned out to be a reference in in this one, design designing and flashing the design. Um, it I already had it in here, um, which was interesting. So that's good to know. Anyways, all right, let's get started. So uh, link is in the description to. Uh, this page on my forked uh, repository and also I will link to the original repository that I am trying to get a pull request approved for. Okay with all that out of the way basically we're going to be making a loadable kernel module which allows you to uh, register a driver for a device that is in your FPGA that you created. Um, so it's really straightforward the cool thing about it is the Linux kernel will match your driver with your custom IP because of this first step here where we modify um, well first of all you do have to complete everything from the previous um, <clears throat> previous step but um, we are going to modify this .tcl file uh, with this information um, which basically will help us uh, will help our <clears throat> driver detect our custom IP. So let's go ahead and do this first step. We need to modify custom LEDs.tlc. This is going to be in our um, golden reference design folder. Um, in our last video, I think it was our last video, we uh, were working out of this building SOC design live. Um, but now this time we are go I uh, went ahead and created a new folder called writing Linux driver live and I have copied in our golden reference design uh, in here and it pretty much has everything that you would have if you completed this design and flashing the design guide uh, which was in our last video. Uh, feel free to go check that out if you haven't done that yet. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, custom LEDs hardware.tcl. We're going to be editing this guy. So, I'm going to open this with code just because I like code. Um, you know, uh, Visual Studio Code I felt like used to open so much faster. And I think I just have too many plugins installed right now. But, um, anyways, uh, do not modify. That's funny. 
Um, okay, so I'm pretty sure we just have to add to the bottom this. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And there it is. And I'll put a blank line underneath and save that. And let's close that. <clears throat> So this is going to add information to our device. Um, after adding this change, we need to regenerate the HDL so that the SOPC info file will be updated with this change. So the SOPC info, this is um, something that is used by the uh, tools and utilities that you get from uh, the um, uh, something that we have in our development environment. I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. Hold on. Okay. so. We have to get this guy to update. In the order to do that, we need to open this project up. And we're going to go into, um, yeah, we're going to open the project. And then we're going to go into Platform Designer or QSIS uh, by going to Tools, Platform Designer, and then open up our QSIS file. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops, I already have this open. Let me close this down. Sorry about that. Okay, that finally loaded up. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go to tools and then we are gonna go to, uh, for me it's QSIS, it depends on what version you have of Quartus. Let me just silence my phone while this is loading. Still loading should ask what project do you want to open, what save file do you want to open. There it is. We will open this up. This shouldn't take too long. I'm, I'm not going to pause the recording while we wait for this. Um, I guess while it is validating, um, we're going to generate the HDL and then we're pretty much just going to be done. We're going to finish and close. We're going to close out of Quartus. Um, and uh, what this does is this updates our SOPC info. There it goes. So we're going to click on generate HDL and leave everything default. Just click generate and I'm going to pause the recording while this runs. Okay, that is all done. We're gonna click on close, we're gonna click on finish, uh, and then we're gonna quit out of Quartus because we are done here. Well, once it catches up. Um, but yeah, let's look at the next steps of my guide here. Um, so now we're gonna generate the device tree. We're gonna be using the embedded command shell. That's what I was trying to say earlier, but I just couldn't think of the name of it. There is this utility which uses this uh, info file and it generates for us a DTS, but keep in mind this is not immediately compatible with the Linux system we built. So we're gonna have to make some modifications to it before it'll actually start working. Oh, I gotta fix that typo there. Um, yeah. I'll do that later. Let's close this down. No, 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 I should do that while I'm looking at it. I'm gonna pause the recording. Okay, we are back, and if I just refresh this. Uh, fixed, okay. Um, yeah, so I've tried to close down Quartus, and it's not responding, but I think that is okay, because I think we got what we needed. Um, if I sort by date modified our SOPC, uh, SOPC info file has been updated. Um, I think that is right now. Not clear. Um, I'm just going to force quit this and close the program. Cancel. I don't know why that crashes on me. That's so annoying. Okay, um, so let's see if this step works, uh, assuming everything goes well. Um, so we need to get into our uh, golden reference design folder and uh, I'm going to use my 
uh, development environment, which I am using Windows Subsystem for Linux. If you haven't seen that video, I have a video on it called setting up the development environment or something like that. Okay, so we need to get to that file path. Oh gosh, I need to turn this down. Okay. And then we are doing right, right, writing next driver live. And then we're going into the DE10 Nano Golden Reference Design folder. So now we're in here and we are in the directory that is our SOPC info. We are going to basically run these commands. Yeah, let's do it. So this is going to generate that SOC system DTS. And if we look in here, there is no SOC system DTS. Oh, there is. Well, it's outdated. That's from 2017. We're going to make one right now. So let's go ahead and do that. We need this one first. So we're going to type in embedded underscore command shell, push enter. And now we're going to do SOPC um, <clears throat> 2 DTS. Actually, you know what? Let's just copy and paste the command. Okay. Paste. Enter. Oh, I think it's done. All right, so now if we refresh, now our SOC DTS here is the latest. And if we look inside there, we should see an entry for custom LEDs. So let's just take a peek inside. And let's look for custom LEDs. So I'm going to do a control F and type in, there it is. And it is pretty much matchy matchy with, oh, and then this part right here, compatible. Uh, this is basically specifying that this device in the device tree is compatible with drivers that um, can drive this kind of thing. Um, that's what this compatible property is. And we set this property um, up here in this first step. So this is how you set um, sort of uh, what, what, is, what the compatibility property will be. Um, if you don't do this first step, it ends up saying like unknown or something. It says like unknown, unknown. Um, but we're not done yet. This is a good starting point, but we're not done yet. Um, we're going to copy this and paste it somewhere else, and we are going to modify it so that it will actually work. Um, the next thing we need to do is determine the base address and span of our FPGA peripheral. So this step here is really more of um, helping you to set up uh, any custom IP that you might have as a component in your FPGA. And I'm not just giving you the values that work with our custom LEDs. So um, this step is sort of showing you how you can get your other devices to work um, with a driver. Um, so keep that in mind as we keep going. So uh, we're supposed to go into our golden reference design folder and we're gonna make a folder called QSys headers. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that command. I am already in this folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that folder. And then we are going to run this command, which is going to create header files. And we've used this once before in our design and flash the design. Um, but this time we're gonna get everything and we're gonna put it all in this QSys headers folder because there was other stuff that we could have gotten that we didn't in the previous guide. <clears throat> see here, SOPC, oh, okay. Um, I need to modify this command. And let me take a look at, I, okay. If we're already in, okay, it's because I don't have this $DEWD set up, so that's not gonna work for me, but I'm already in the folder, so as long as you can do the absolute path or the relative path to your SOPC info that we just generated, um, this command should work. So let's go ahead and run that. Enter. And what did we get? Oh, creating macro file. Okay, so it worked. So 
if I do an ls on our QSys headers folder, we have these files right here. And these are all the other files that you can get um, out of that uh, utility, you SOPC create header files. Um, and uh, that matches what the guide says we should be seeing. And this is giving basically um, addresses of the hardware system from uh, multiple perspectives. Um, so this is how you're able to address things in the memory, the peripheral memory. Okay, so I we're going to go into that folder. So, whoa, where did I go? We're going to go in that folder. <clears throat> and we're going to do a clear. And then I have these grep commands, which... Uh, I actually didn't come up with. Um, well, I came up with this one, but it was actually really easy to come up with it. Um, but all of this stuff is actually from this how-to article. Uh, so it's not exactly my work, but it works great. Um, paste that in here. And this is giving us all the base addresses of our um, components, including our custom LED zero. And there's our base address. So let's go ahead and copy this and we're going to paste it here, paste it here, and paste it here, and we're gonna delete this guy. <clears throat> okay, um, and I'm gonna save that. And this is the output we should see, and that is what we saw. Um, so while we're in that folder, we can also check out what the, sp oh, what the let me fix that typo. I'm gonna pause the recording. Okay, we are back. This is good. I, I like that I'm making a video on this because I'm sort of, it's for, it's forcing me to proofread my work. Okay, ta-da! List out the span of the FPGA components. I just got that updated. And that is because basically we're going to be printing out the entire header file and then um, we are going to be searching for anywhere that says uh, this and then we're piping that output and we're looking for anything that has this. Um, and then we're piping that output and then we're specifying this. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know specifically what these options to grep do. I just know grep is a searching utility that's built into Linux. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead and just, uh, just for the sake of it, list out the span. And there is our spans. We can see custom LEDs span of eight. That is what we specified in the previous guide. And there is only eight onboard LEDs. So, um, we are now ready to use this information to modify our socfpga.dtsi. So for this one, I'm going to open a new Ubuntu session, and I'm going to go into our working directory, and I'm going to go into our Linux kernel directory. So here we are in the correct spot, and I am just going to do code here. <clears throat> that's just how I like to do things. Now, since I was in here earlier, I think it's just going to open up um, everything I was working on last time. Oh, uh, let me pause the recording to clear out the changes that I have made so that it, for continuity's sake. One second. Okay, sorry, that was a little bit of an oversight, but I'm just going to roll with it. So, inside of the Arch folder or directory, um, and then, oops, that is not the Arch directory and then inside ARM, and then inside boot, and then inside DTS, there is a lot, a lot, a lot. And we are gonna scroll down to socfpga.dtsi. Now, I already have it open right here, um, as you can see, but uh, it is in here, there it is. Okay, and then um, if we look in here, uh, this, this, uh, this device tree sort of reminds me of um, a little bit of a JSON um, format where you have things enclosed in curly braces and you have properties that you can just set. It looks, it, that's what it reminds me of at least. Um, but in here, we actually have uh, an entry called SOC right here. And um, also inside SOC, we see our familiar FPGA bridge. This is pointed out in the modifying the device tree step of the guide, um, which I think, uh, yeah, configuring the device tree, um, one of the previous guides that you should have already completed. And one of the steps of that guide was to get this to be of a status of enabled. And that was actually accomplished by doing a overlay 
Um, and uh, the guide has you configuring the device tree. Uh, oh, that is a broken link. Let me fix that. Okay, we are back. Um, this should have been updated now. Oh, well, uh, oh, do what? Doc stocks. This should, okay, refresh the page. This should have been updated. There we go, I just had to refresh the page. Uh, yeah, yeah, in this one we created my custom, uh, my, cut my custom DTS, which is a device tree overlay. Um, right here, device tree overlay binary. Um, and then in this one, the change that you made was enable the FPGA bridges. Um, so what I would like you to do is to continue using your device tree overlay that has these changes. Um, and then in this guide, we're going to modify our SOC FPGA. So um, all we need to do is take our <clears throat> modified generated device tree entry here that's all ready to go with all the information we need. This is looking perfect. And we are going to paste it in here. Um, and it has to be inside of the SOC. Um, okay like this. Now one other thing, and I need to make a note for myself to add this to the guide, um, but we need to change that clock variable because in this one there is no ampersand CLK underscore zero. I believe it is called OSC um, and then there's OSC1 and then OSC2, but we want OSC1. Um, Or do we want OSC2? Uh, give me one second. Oh, I know how to check. I can just take Control Z. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Close this. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. We can bring this back. Oh, we actually want it to be uh, ampersand L4 main. So go ahead and make sure you do that. And I will make sure the guide reflects this after we finish this video. Okay, and I think I, I don't remember where I saw that and then just started using it, but that's the clock we wanna feed our custom LEDs component here. Right, so uh, the differences between the two that we have are the clock, everything is matchy-matchy, so we've pretty much recreated the work uh, except for this clock variable, there's a difference there between what the Quartus Golden Reference Design image is using and what we're what we've been using in our um, in our setup with this uh, with this whole setup. Okay, cool. So we'll minimize that. We'll go back to full screen on this, and this is really all the change you need. Now, one other thing that I do want to mention: um, this is uh, my my custom .dts. Uh, but I renamed it to SOC FPGA. I, I renamed it to this underscore custom. Uh, but don't let that alarm you. It is literally the same changes as what we saw um, in the previous two guides. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Please feel free to leave a comment below if I lost you along the way. Um, and also feel free to check out the guide yourself if you would like to uh, take a shot at it. Okay, so, um, yeah, right there. Okay, so it is in the guide. I just don't have any uh, mention of it in the instructions to make sure you do that. Okay, so now that we uh, have our change to the device tree ready to go, all we have to do is make the uh, DTB binary, so the device tree binary. Now, if I were to run this, uh, it's going to fail, and it's going to say that doesn't exist. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and that is because my DTB is actually going to be SOC underscore FPGA underscore. Uh, it's going to be this long name. Um, so 
So let me copy that. Paste it there. Uh, and that is all you need to specify. You just push enter. And it should have put out a message. Give me just one second here. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I don't need to pause the recording. I know why I didn't get anything. And that is because I already have a DTB right here. So if I were to delete this DTB, and I didn't modify anything because I already had the change in here. I, I you know, through the magic of uh, movie editing, I already had everything ready to go. Let's try this again. Okay, that's the message you should see, you should see is this DTC and then it echoes out the path to the, your file. Um, okay, so I believe we're ready to jump over to the DE10. Yes, we are we're ready to send this over to the DE10 Nano and load it up on the DE10 Nano, the device tree. We have to flash the device tree. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, over here on the, on the tabletop, I have my power cable ready to go. I'm going to plug in to the uh, USB UART port that's right next to our Ethernet port. And uh, we are going to jump back over to the computer and open up Putty. Uh, and then we're going to go to Serial. And then uh, once again, if you aren't familiar with this, we're going to go to Device Manager. And we are going to check where is that device plugged in on what COM port. Once it loads under port COM3, it's been COM3 every single video so far, but I've seen it change. I know it can change. 115200 and click open. So this is ready to go. And then I am simply going to plug in the power port on the board. And once I do that, the whole thing comes to life. Very cool. And, um, you know, in the previous guide, we saw how to configure U-Boot to flash our FPGA with our golden reference design. I already have that completed, so make sure you have that uh, working. Um, and it's basically the same stuff from the previous guide. The same golden reference design image from the previous design. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go into root here. We're gonna do clear. I'm also gonna make the font size bigger. I think I've done that every single video. There's gotta be a way to save these changes for every time, but I guess I'm just too lazy to, uh, to do it myself. Okay, change settings, appearance, change. Let's go 14. Apply. Okay. Um, so, I already have... Uh, DTB. Oh, I already have this DTB here. Oh, no, it's this one custom DTB. Um, I'm not going to remove that. Uh, if I SCP to this file, it will overwrite it. It will overwrite the contents with the new data. So all we need to do is, well, we need to figure out what is our IP address. Um, but for me, it has not changed. I have config 192.168.0.62. Okay, so we are going to issue a SCP copy paste, cop, copy, paste, and then we have to type in our IP address, 192.168.0.62, and we're going to send it to the home directory over here. Um, let me get the face scan out of the way. And we're not sending my custom, for me at least. We're sending uh, this SOC FPGA. So DTS slash SOC FPGA underscore cyclone underscore SOC development kit underscore custom DTB. Uh, enter. Uh, type in the password. And off it goes. And so now if I do ls-al, uh, we can see that this DTB has been, nope, this DTB has been updated today. 
actually that's tomorrow technically I don't know why it says it's the 28th on here but that's fine okay so now we are ready to replace the existing tree on the DE10 Nano so you can SSH in or however you'd like to do it um, but I already have this FAT folder ready to go I didn't delete it it's just a mounting point and we are going to mount slash dev slash MMC uh, P1 to FAT. Enter. Now when we do an LS on the FAT, we can see there's stuff in there. And then now we're going to issue a copy command and we're going to issue our um, brand span canoe uh, device tree binary. And we are going to send it into the FAT folder and overwrite the SOC FPGA. DE0 period device tree binary. So once that gets overwritten, uh, whatever is inside this mount point uh, with this name, that is what is used for the device tree binary. So we will copy that in there and we will un or U mount fat, which will unmount it. And then we're going to reboot. And this will update our device tree binary with a new device tree. Oops. Okay. And then this is my attempt uh, for letting you know if this worked or not. You should be able to issue this cat command and you should see this output. And that lets you know. Oh, you should see that they're all enabled. I should fix that. Uh, um, make a note of that. I don't want to pause the recording anymore. I just want to get through this. Okay, did we reboot? Yes, we did. Login on root. Password is root. And let's run this command. And we have the same output so everything's looking good so we are now ready to write our driver so inside of our working directory uh, now this one if you're doing this on Windows 10 like I am with the same setup that I have um, you do have to do this on your Ubuntu box or your Ubuntu Windows subsystem for Linux um, now I already have a driver LED folder so I'm gonna make your driver LED underscore live and then we are going to uh, go inside that folder and create a driver LEDC. Okay, so we're going to code driver LED live. Okay, so driver underscore LED underscore live dot C. Enter. And there it is. And we, uh, you can study this code. Oh my goodness, I put my name in here. I did not realize I did that. Um, <laughs> I wonder if I should change it. Uh, no, I'll keep it. Whatever. I did not mean to do that. Um, okay, so you can study this code. And yeah. Um, it does take some tinkering around with copy, paste, save, and now we have the code. Um, so now that we have the code copy and pasted in, um, I did not make up this code. I found it on the rocket boards link and I, I noted that in the guide here. Uh, we are going to build this. Um, Okay, so we need to make a make file. Um, we're going to call it make file. And we are going to copy this code in here. And if this is not your, uh, you can specify the full path or the uh, true path, you know, the relative path that actually brings you to this folder. This is true for me for how I have mine set up, so this will work for me. But feel free to replace that to the full path. And if you're kind of confused what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about is this. We are in our working directory. If I go inside the my Linux folder that has my Linux kernel, um, and I do PWD, this is the full path. So if I copy this path and I put it here, 
um, then that will make this work. Um, but this is specifying a relative path that actually resolves to find this folder. So this will work. I may have explained that more than I needed to. We're going to make another file called kbuild with a capital K. And we are going to copy the contents in here to here. Now I don't really understand uh, this K, how this kbuild file works, but um, Rocket Boards has uh, lots of uh, references that it, uh, help you learn more about it. Now that we have these files, we just need to run the make command. So um, we can close out of this. We're going to come back over to here. We're going to go into our um, driver LED live folder. And we're going to simply type make. And we have an error. Oh, I know why. That is because I named mine uh, driver underscore LED underscore live, which is a mis well, that's uh, correct. I just have to make it consistent in my make files um, because I changed the name of it. I have to stay consistent throughout. I can't just copy and paste anymore. So this should be driver LEDs live. Save. And I just want to check something very quickly. I know I'm going off on a tangent here. Okay, this should be LEDs. This driver LEDs live, driver LEDs live, and I think that's all we have to change. Okay, close this down. We're gonna hit make again. And it worked. And so this has given us bunch of stuff, but specifically this KO or this kernel object. And this is our driver that we can use to install. So we're going to send that over to our DE10 Nano. So SCP driver underscore LEDs live KO. We're going to send that to root at 192.168.0.62 colon tilde. Um, yeah, send it off there give it a password and when we look inside here if we do an LS we now have this driver LEDs KO live and uh, we are now ready to test the driver so to install the driver we do this insert mod or INS mod and then the KO file so let's try that and um, so I'm gonna type out INS mod driver LED live KO oh no 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 this is I need to be not on Ubuntu, but I need to be on um, the DE10 Nano. Okay, driver LEDs live KO. Now, before I push enter, let's go to the tabletop and we are going to take a peek at our LEDs here. Now, that green blinking light means we are running the golden reference design, but if you take a look at the kernel code when uh, and also if you study uh, some of the references that are linked in the guide um, the code the kernel code uh, runs a few functions like the probe and then uh, the init uh, when this driver gets installed when it gets launched one of the things in there is there's a line of code that writes once to all of the registers for all the LEDs so when I push enter here and I run this command to install our driver, all of the LEDs turn on and that is because we have a line of code in there that do that. Let me switch back over to the desktop here. You can see uh, driver LEDs uh, taints the kernel, which there is references explaining that. Um, we're gonna initialize, basically this is saying that the, the driver is proprietary. We're initializing custom LEDs module, we're going to enter, we're going to exit LEDs probe, and then we're going to be done. So uh, if we take a look at the kernel code, there is LEDs probe, LEDs probe, and then this line right here, 
we're writing um, LEDs value FF, and then we are going to do this IO write call that actually writes it to those registers. And that's the, that's the command that writes all ones to all eight LEDs. Um, one interesting thing is that the uh, blinky continues to blink, um, but I guess uh, I don't think there's a huge reason to be worried about that. <coughs> Okay, so inside of our dev folder, there is a um, custom LEDs entry in here now. And we can actually write characters to this entry inside our dev folder. Um, and so for example, we can say echo the character nine, the ASCII character nine, and send it to custom LEDs. And the ASCII character decodes to a binary value and that writes to the LEDs. So um, let's run. Let's type out this command. Before I push enter, let's go to the tabletop, and then if I push enter, you see the LEDs change, um, and we can do a different value as well. We can do zero, I guess. Um, so you can see different LEDs are lining up based on the value that you're sending um, that you're sending to this custom LEDs char file. Now the last trick is uh, when you uninstall the Linux kernel module, which I will do here, copy, paste, and push enter. Um, I don't know the story with this error, oops, okay I don't know the story with this error that it prints out, but we see that our LEDs remove function enters and exits and then we successfully are unregistered. And over on the tabletop, it goes ahead and shuts down all of the LEDs. And that is the conclusion of this guide. So congratulations if you were able to follow along and if you were able to get this working. Um, you have successfully written your first loadable kernel module driver. Um, I was so satisfied to get this working and to be able to write out this guide and to be able to give you this video. Uh, so this is uh, this has been very exciting for me. I, I love learning about all this stuff. I've never touched Linux kernel prior to this. I've never touched writing drivers or any of that stuff prior to this. So this was a huge learning experience for me. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions uh, or if you're having any problems, feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to me, uh, you know, I, I've had a few viewers reach out to me over Instagram, which is fine. I have an Instagram social media account and I, I do get notified when I get messaged there. Um, the other thing that I do want to bring attention to, if I head over to my channel, um, I believe I have it on my most recent video, but I just want to highlight this in this video here. If you are trying to contact me, um, you can email me at this email address, metaphysicscomputing.com. Ooh, just move it up a little. There it is. Uh, email me at this email address. Um, I had I get zero emails at that email address um, as it stands right now, and I do get notifications on my phone, so I will definitely take the time to read your email and get back to you if you have any questions or you want to ask me about anything. I would say that is going to be the new place to do it. Uh, if you want to reach out on Instagram, you can continue to do that as well. Um, I do not check the Twitter account. I should really take the Twitter account off because I just don't get on Twitter. Um, but yeah, uh, I, the only reason why I am saying this is because I have had two different uh, viewers of my channel uh, reach out to me and let me know that one of they, they wrote a very long comment on my channel and it disappeared. And when I look on my creator dashboard, it's not there. I Zero notifications. So um, if you really want to give me a detailed uh, communication and you don't want to risk having it get wiped out by YouTube's filter comment system, um, just be aware that is an option for you. Um, anyways, thank you so much. My name is Cameron Kirk, and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.